I'm a Christian, obviously, and or not obviously, but um, so I've been kind of struggling with just a little kind of dilemma that I keep running in my head. Uh huh. Um, so if God, I I think you kind of answered like a little bit, and I don't know if you're allowed to because this has a little bit to do with predestination. Uh huh. But if we are, if God is just, yes, an all just God. And w he knows that there are people out there that are not saved, and he does doesn't do anything about it, and they go to hell. Um, what does that ultimately say about God's nature? God um, knows all counterfactuals. He knows how people are going to react in any situation, and right. he wants people to be saved more than we do. Yeah. So if people ultimately do not accept Christ, it's not God's fault. They don't want to accept Christ. And even if he had gotten them the gospel, they wouldn't have accepted it. God freely, or God allows people to have free will to make moral choices. So, so if you follow my channel for any time, you know that I like to tank Frank Turek's videos and kind of analyze his responses. I typically do not agree with the majority of his responses because he falls on the lines of free will, Arminianism, uh, in regards to his theology. But uh, I wanted to... Expo examine this clip here because this student and there's, there's three parts uh three responses to this same clip that i'll make but the student asks frank some really biblical questions and can, i think he kind of gets frank tripped up and i want to deal with this particular video with the first question and the question the student asks is if god is just and knows that there are people who are not saved and are going to hell if god doesn't do anything then what does that say about the nature of god now frank's response is God knows all counterfactuals. He knows how people are going to react in all situations. Now, my response to that is he's dealing with the erroneous looking through the quarter of time fallacy in which God looks through the time and history to see what mankind will do. And that is wrong. That's uh, erroneous. That's heretical. That's not a biblical view of the way God does things. God is sovereign and he's omniscient. He's all knowing. But this sovereign God has predestined for all things to come about by his decree in the confines of his will. So we see that God has chosen an elect people. That's number one, Ephesians 1 through 4. God has a chosen means by which these people would be saved, Matthew 27, uh, for the burial, death, burial, and resurrection of his son. And then we have God has chosen the means by which he would bring his chosen to him, John 6, 44, John 6, 65, in which states, no one can come to me lest it is granted him by the Father. So with all that being said, this does not exclude the responsibility of mankind from actively making the decision to repent and put their faith in Christ. But that is true. So you have these two two obstacles where people want to say, well, God is sovereign, but man is also responsible. How do you make those two fit? And it's not our job to make them fit. Both of them are true. And so we must accept that, that both are true. Uh, so in conclusion, with this particular clip, nobody has free will. We all have a will, but it's not free. Because we don't have because we don't choose it. We all have a will that we have been given due to our nature of which we do not choose. So you are either your will is either to sin or it's will to righteousness. You're one of two. You're either in Christ or you're out of Christ. You're either a slave to sin or a slave to righteousness. That's those are the only two wills you have. Uh, you can't choose to be good, nor can you choose to be saved. God is sovereign, not us. And so uh, I hope I've answered that question. And, and like I said, there's three parts to this. And I want to uh, touch on both parts because I think the. Young man asking the questions really uh, asked some biblical questions, and uh, I like his responses. So, yeah, stick with me on this.